The Italians were gathered in a cramped room, arguing fiercely. この島に黄金を隠せということか東洋人たちは信用できません特にあの山本という男断じて油断できません黄金を逃げして日本人たちに見られたのはやはり失敗でした関と共に沈めるべきでした日本人の基地で沈めてどうする。やがていつかは引き上げられる。隠したことにはなれない。いずれにせよ、この島から黄金を誰にも知られずに運び出す方法はない。養生で名誉ある自信を選んでいたらこんなことには。艦のダメージが
はいをやられてる助からない幸運な犠牲だあの手榴弾が不発でなかったら全員死んでる Okay, Nanook was still rolling about on the floor. He had been a surprise attack. Lieutenant Yamamoto had probably judged that the negotiations would not go his way and had decided to make the, murf the first move. Yeah, basically. What else? Maybe he had been planning from the beginning to put them in a position of having to take a vote in order to gather them all in one place. Okay, Kenjima belonged to the Japanese. They killed all the Italians. Then not health, but all the gold will go to them. Still a chance the grenade might go off late. The Italians rushed out into the corridor. They heard gunfire from down the hallway. It was coming from the direction of the submarine dock. Clearly, the troops guarding the pile of gold were being attacked. <laughs> あいつなるほど。黄金の万人を任されるだけの兵士ということか。人数はこちらが上だ。焦らず囲んで殺せ。イタリア銀狩りだ。And as I heard the sound of repeated gunfire, I knew. I knew that whatever it was that had been smoldering since the time the gold was loaded had finally burst into flame. And the eyes of our soldiers when looking at the gold had not been normal. Yeah, those eyes had been entranced by demons. The dance had also been at breaking point due to the heavy burden they bore. Who wouldn't have snapped after becoming trapped in a distant land where you can't understand the language of the writing? Thinking I had to do something, I ran towards the sonic gunfire. Looking back on it, that was an extremely foolish thing to do. That sound meant that there were people shooting at each other, people killing each other, and yet, unarmed as I was, I dashed towards the sound as though I was trying to mediate some schoolyard fight. It didn't take long before I learned how foolish and nice such a thing was in a heat of battle. H Hiraoka Hezo. Warrant Officer Hiraoka was lying face down, his entire body drenched in blood. Judging by the trail of blood behind him, it was clear that he had somehow managed to crawl here from a different room before dying. No, he was still twitching. He might not be dead yet, but... On this island without a doctor, no. Even if we had a doctor, how could anyone possibly save a man who had been shot this many times in the chest? When I looked into the room he must have crawled out of, I saw two more blood-stained Japanese corpses. Uh, I where where is Beatrice, though? I hope that she's safe. I fell backwards pathetically on my butt, my mouth hanging open in shock. Come to think of it, that was the first time I ever faced death in my life. The entire world was at war. Even though millions were dying both east and west, this was the first time I met with a person's death directly. Ridiculous. Didn't I join the army hoping to die? I whine about not being sent to the front lines. Yeah, well, I guess thanks to Beatrice, things have changed. <laughs> yeah, so rejoice, Kenzo. Isn't this the death you were looking for? Why not spread your hands and yell out loud? Come for me, magnificent death. Someone came running towards me. He was a colleague of mine, a Japanese man. Hajimakun. <laughs> he dashed towards me, pale faced and out of breath. His face seemed horribly contorted with terror. Mine probably looked the same. 
Someone yelled in Italian, and at the same time, Tajima couldn't let out a scream. Then, he grabbed onto me as he fell to the floor. That stain was spreading across his back before my eyes. As he spat bubbles of blood, he said that one word, and died. But the shocking event of seeing someone die right in front of me did not capture my attention. No living thing is concerned with the, de the deaths of others at a fundamental level. The one thing that matters is whether they themselves die or not. My attention was fully occupied by the barrel of the gun the so Italian soldier was pointing. Oh god! Touch my clone's back burst once more as he leaned against me. Flesh tore, blood spattered. The warm splash of it covered my face. Was the Italian still trying to finish him off? Even though he had stopped moving for good? How foolish I've been. Can I still not understand the scene in front of me? Rejoice, Kinzo. Now you'll finally get what you've wanted all this time. The Italian hand fired to finish off Tajmakun. He had been aiming at the man Tajmakun had fallen on. Me, Oshiromiya Kinzo. Now you're basically using Tajima as a human shield, Kinzo. I pushed his corpse aside, scrambled against the floor, and dashed away, tumbling over myself. My hands had pushed off against the floor hard enough to tear off the ring finger, fingernail on my left hand. When faced with death, he once truly can resist with all they've got. I tumbled over the nobody as I ran, scraping up parts of my body. It's painful, hot, but that didn't matter at all. I heard the yelling in Italian come from behind me over and over again. I feel like they were running, chasing after me. Uh, yeah, guys, remember the whole thing about leaving some of them alive so that you can use them for carrying the gold? Now you're just going on a killing spree with everybody? I didn't want to look back. So I kept on running and running, as though the hands were right behind me. It's, it's death. Do you want to die? No, I don't want to die. Why? Didn't I want to die so badly? And now I know. I know how wonderful it is to be alive. She taught me. Beecher did. I can only be free when I talk with her. No. By talking with her, I was finally alive for the first time. I was finally bored. I want to live. I want to live, I want to live, I want to live! I don't want to die! I want to live and see her, right now! If I don't see her, I'll die, I'll be killed! Stay cool, Kenzo. She might be killed too. If you live and she dies, you might as well be dead. If I knew it, my face was covered in tears, snot, and drool. When I stumbled over something and fell, I was finally able to come to my senses alone. I can still hear indeterminate gunfire. The gunfight was still going, and it had spread throughout the entire base. Peachy, are you okay? I'll find her and take her to a safe place. The lieutenant will probably kill all of the Italians to steal the gold. Which probably won't be an exception. Beat. Beat. Meaning he was the first time I ever lived. The first time I was ever born. So if you die, I'll die again. I can feel every cell in my body being reborn. Not as a Shirmiya Kinzo, but as a completely different Kinzo. Of course, I was terrified that I may really be shot if I went back. But I no longer wanted to die. In the truest possible sense. So, I was able to overcome my fear. Oh! Rubens! What's going on? 
義は何君が知らなくていいそこにじっと隠れていろ同胞が呼びかけるまで出てくるんじゃないイタリア人の声が聞こえたそこにいるぞクソ誰と応用しんべえっ Wait, two 9mm bullets from his Beretta M1944. However, one of the 8mm bullets from their Type 94 semi auto pistols went straight into Ruben's chest. All three of the shooters were struck in the chest and fell down in a heap. The next person to appear was the commanding officer of the Japanese soldiers, Yamamoto, the blast of free guns that just sunk. Adding on Beatrice's screams, it was hardly surprising that he had noticed the encounter. Yamamoto spat. Beatrice used that moment to snatch up Ruben's gun. <laughs> he spat this last part at the two dying men who lay moaning at his feet. However, it wasn't particularly surprising. And this wasn't the only place it was happening. Nearly everyone met head on in these tiny cramped tunnels. And both sides shot recklessly in a situation like that. There's always two corpses. So the way to be fastest was to pull the trigger immediately the moment you sensed another person. And that was the only way to make it through this battle without ending up with a bullet in your chest. Because of this, both Japanese and Italians killed each other without hesitation. And they sometimes even pulled the trigger on their own countrymen when they unexpectedly ran into each other. In the midst of all this, large numbers of Japanese men who had no idea what was going on ran towards the noise and became victims one after another. It didn't matter whether the other person was holding a gun or not. Everyone reflexively pulled the trigger at the sight of anyone other than themselves, trying to stay alive. The slaughter engulfed the entire base. There was a fierce gun battle taking place in the submarine lock. And a massacre resembling a hunt was taking place inside the base. Most of the non combatants assigned to the space were killed before they knew what was going on. The Italians were indeed quite seasoned troops, but the numbers began to drop bit by bit. Blood stained corpses lay scattered all across the base. At first, they had probably been a proper gunfight. However, as they gradually became desensitized, it evolved into that most basic cause of wars for all humanity. The desire to kill all foreigners you don't understand. Whenever they heard words they didn't understand, they pulled the trigger. By that point, the screams of foreigners sounded no different from those of man shaped beasts. After all, they couldn't understand pleading in another language. So, he had long ago turned into a mere massacre. As the number of dead surpassed the number of living, silence began to return to the base. It was when he felt as though everyone had died and the desert sound of the wind blew through the caves. There would be a sudden scream, the crisp sound of a gun, and one who remembered that massacre still wasn't over. And this happened over and over again, until eventually, true silence fell. It marked the pitiful end for those led astray by gold.
and the leader of the Italian soldiers, Angelo, had managed to survive somehow. He encountered nothing but the corpses of friend and foe. All was quiet once more in the base. If he was careless enough to call out, he might be shot from the shadows somewhere. So, he snuck about like a panther, breathing quietly, searching for the remaining enemies. There was no sign or trace of any living person. Maybe all the people in this base had died. The Japanese took first. But at that time, we were also talking about killing him. He simply made the first move as military men. So, perhaps I should be grateful for today. Can you be grateful for this? I'm just asking. Even if the boat had come to take us away, there would have been no honor for us. It would have been mere failures in our mission, and fit to face our dead comrades. Ah oh, yeah, quote unquote, honor. Perhaps dying here in the far east alongside my gun. He has a more fitting end for a soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From around the corner, I noticed the son of a leg being dragged along the ground. And I strained to hear. Is someone seriously wounded and shuffling with a whim? Noticing before they notice me greatly helps my chances. At this stage, there's no point in taking prisoners. We must dispose of all the Japanese. I'll dash around the corner. Quickly check to see who they are, and shoot if it's a Japanese person. Nothing more. I've been behind my, I've been hiding my footsteps the whole time. They probably don't know I'm here. Once the shuffling footsteps have come close enough, Angelo leaned around the corner and raised his gun. The voice that reached him spoke Italian. Oh, Ice. <gasps> あ。貴様を探していたぞ。アンジェロ少尉。これで全員だな。俺はしっかり貴様らの死体を数えて回ってたんだからな。すっかりして。Okay. For a second I thought that Biche was actually shot there. And it was by it was by Angelo, and I was like, "What?" Okay. Angelo, sorry. Blood poured from Angelo's chest. His gun fell to the floor, and then his knees, and then the rest of his body crumpled and stopped moving. Yamamoto's accuracy with a gun wasn't particularly stiff. However, Angelo had waited until they were fairly close before jumping out, so Yamamoto had been able to hit his target. He had managed it with a short barreled handgun in one hand, and a woman as a hostage in the other. So then you should be more like a rock, Kenji Mashubitai no Nasaki Nai Kutuyo. Masaka Watashi Igai was Zain Shindano de Warumaida. Yare Yare Kuzdom. Oh, now Tatani Toranaka Tatakai Nai. Stodenasi. Yeah, I guess so. I guess what Angelo saw before with some feet being dragged around, that was, that was Biche. Okay. <laughs> such an obvious lie that even he wore a bitter smile. Italians were spies working for the enemy, and they all died along with the garrison in the gunfight. And that was the story Yamamoto wanted to tell, and so he couldn't afford to have any Italian survivors. And at this point, he wouldn't be able to keep the entire pile of gold, but he could at least grab as many ingots as he could carry. Even that would be worth a huge amount of money. Beatrice suddenly swung her head, smashing Yamamoto's nose hard. Yes! Someone 
She almost managed to escape. However, Yamamoto quickly grabbed her leg and tripped her. She fell onto her back. Yamamoto mercilessly stomped his foot down on her stomach and pointed his gun at her. <laughs> Kinzo had jumped out from the shadows. He was holding a gun he had stolen from one of the corpses. Thank goodness. Hmm? Yamamoto didn't know that the grenade had been the threat. The surprise attack, which he had been certain would work, had failed. So he had decided that Kinzo must have tipped him off. この裏切り者めあなたが黄金に目がくらんだからこの事態を招いたのではないのか逃げてキンゾこの男は命を失ってる人も撃ったわあなたが撃たれる喋るなイタリア女Yamamoto ground his heel into Beatrice's gut. Yamamoto,彼女は何の関係もない。ああ、銃を上官に向けるとはどういうつもりか。頭を冷やせよ、愚か者め。私とお前で口裏を合わせれば。あの黄金の山は私たちだけのものではないか。私一人では少々を屈ねるくらいしかできんが、お前と二人でならもっと多くの数を屈ねることができる。上官面をするつもりはないぞ。男同士、二人できっちり山分けしようじゃないか。
now we have uh, now we have dealt with the problem. Bye, Yamamoto. You are surely not going to be remembered anytime soon. If there is one thing that I'm going to be admiring, it is Yamamoto's uh, voice acting and such. He did a great job for this episode. <laughs> I'm saying that specifically because uh, I I have a sneaking suspicion. I, like, I have a like a feeling that that voice actor was the same one for Najo. I'm just... I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that was uh, Nanjo's voice actor. Beatrice tried to stand up, but then doubled over and started coughing. Okay, well, you two are gonna be fine. Don't worry. You, Beatrice and Kienzo. Beatrice, <laughs> あげしく踏んだものだから。大丈夫か。俺でいなければいいんだが。これくらいで折れるほど<笑> Yamamoto had shown no mercy. Her ribs were probably cracked. <sighs> we didn't have the option of waiting, possibly for several days, for the ship that was coming. I made the decision to ferry her off this island. The man who kept yelling about preserving the secrecy of the base is lying there dead. The next island over, Nijima, is close. A small boat should be able to take us there.君を病院へ運ばなければならない。君が思っているより傷が深かったらいけない。知らなかった。この島には病院もあるのね。ない。隣の島へ船で運ぶ。君は病院へ。私はこの島での出来事をうまく片付けないと。飛ば。頼みが
英語がわかる者はいるかと騒ぎ出したの。Kinzo met Beatrice. He finally forgot about Don. And when Beatrice met Kinzo, she also forgot about Don. Yeah. Even more similarity between the two of them. Not just in that aspect, but what I was talking before about how rough their lives have been. それは叶えられない望みだとも分かってるならば全て迎えの船が来るまでの数日間をあなた胸の痛みなんて気にしないだって迎えの船に連れ去られたら私はもう死んでしまうのだから。Beatrice spoke smiling softly. She did her best to hide the pain in her chest. Looking apologetic, Kinzo left the battle up and gently sat her on the boat. やっぱり日本の男は軟弱だわ。そうだな。私は行く字なしだ。だから君の願いは片方しか叶えられない。片方。He の方は叶えられないということさ。え、どういう意味？君を祓う、そっちを叶えることにした。金座。Oh my! It has to be a doctor in Jimo. I'm wearing a navy uniform. I should be able to pass myself off as a survivor of a boat carrying a VIP that was sunk by enemy ships. You know, that's a good point. Again, I was talking before about how by the time the hospital would learn, Beecher would already be healed and, you know, just go away. That or Kinzo can just pull some strings and tell them, hey, do not contact anyone. <laughs> or something like that. If the doctor happens to be of the greedy sort, all the better. After all, I have right here the golden magic to make people do what I say. She came from a distant country, took my lifeless body, and gave me a soul. The witch, who came bearing gold, revived me with her magic. Kimiwa, magic. オーゴンの魔女だ。え、オーゴンの魔女よ。みんなと同じレシピで作ってるのに、私だけがパスタから消し炭を生み出す錬金術が使えるの。うふ。エルキミ。うん。You know, I I was uh. Mentioning this idea of how alchemy may have been like the equivalent of you know making tea and such. I guess uh, be like uh, what Beaches says right over here. That would uh, that would be a hint towards that. That an equivalent to like alchemy would be making food or drinks and such. <laughs> Pasta into a smoking black heap. <laughs> あなたと同じく私もあなたがいてくれる限り生きることを許される屍あなたがいなくなったら私はすぐにでも死んでしまう死なせない本当に絶対に
とってね責任だってあなたは私をさらったんだから。そうですか金蔵さんがそこまで話しましたかうんではまさかあなたなのですかああ、そうだったら you and 金,金蔵 met each other for the first time you are the doctor that、uh, actually helped beat you after that whole instant wow おじいさまがベアトリーチを連れて行った Yeah. Also, Nijima, of course. Nanjo is from Nijima. Yeah, Totsen, Kaigun no Heitai Sanga, Gaikokuji no Jose Utsrete, Araweta no des. Yeah, that was, that was surely quite interesting. I guess now we're gonna be, um, We're gonna be hearing some more,、uh, some more of the story, but from Nanjo's、uh, perspective. Like he's gonna continue the story a little bit over here, which is interesting. Like one comment that I wanna make in regards to what we, what we've seen with Kinzo and Beatrice. Like、uh, remember when,、uh, when、uh, Kinzo was. In, like in the middle of all that chaos, and wanted to, to find、uh, Beecham. And、uh, he said that without Beecham, he would have no more, no reason to live anymore. That Beecham was the one that gave life to gave life to Kinzo. And if Beecham were to die, then Kinzo would die too. I'm not gonna lie when I say that this actually reminds me of,、uh, <laughs> of、uh, Romeo and Juliet, which, you know, I've had my comments about Romeo and Juliet before. It's not something that I like, like one bit in my eyes. I, I see it as a problematic、uh, romance story and all that. But, you know, in this case, not only, not only am I gonna wait. Until the entire story is being told here in Yumineko. Not only that, but. Well, I mean, this story has its problematic, problematic elements too, if you are to apply it to real life relationships and such. But then again, it is Yumineko. It, uh, it uh, can be quite something, because it is, as, as I said last time, when.、Um, When we learned that,、uh, like, after a while, I was、uh, a bit skeptical about Beatrice being born for Beller's sake, which is a big no no in real life. But after a while, in Yumineko's context, it actually makes sense and such. So I'm just gonna wait and see how this love story will pan out. Like, I am dying to see how much it affected Kinzo. Like, after Beach's death. And how, how much Beach has helped Kinzo in this entire thing. So, yeah. I was surprised. But, in the end, I was in the hospital. I was in the hospital. I was in the h o s Yeah, more than likely. So, this is the first time I've ever seen it. I've never 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 seen it. 黄金のインゴットを差し出す相手ですぞ厄介事はごめんでしたしぶしぶとですとも確かにそれもそうですねでも南條先生は
ベアトリーチをかくまってくれたんですね金蔵さんほどではありませんが私にも英語の心得がありました二人の会話を漏れ聞き二人が決して厄介な何者かでないと確信したからです。